In the previous video of schizophrenia, we deal with the definition of schizophrenia, why it is called so, and the symptoms negative, positive or cognitive. And to know about that video, in the description there is link. Please go there and see that video so that you can understand this video really well. Due to spectrum of symptoms in schizophrenia, the patients are categorized in different types according to their symptoms. A common type called paranoid schizophrenia has prominent hallucination and delusion and can develop in the later stage of life. It has normal or unaffected emotions and speech, but this person is at risk for suicidal and violent behavior. It is dangerous type of schizophrenia because you never know when a normal person will change into uh, suicidal behaviors. Then another is hyperphrenic or disorganized schizophrenia. In this disorder, the behavior is disorganized, thoughts are disorganized, there are health complaints, there is grimace, there is giggling and pranks. There can be mannerism as well. Delusion and hallucination are fleeting and this develops in the age group of 15 to 25. Then comes undifferentiated schizophrenia. In this type of schizophrenia, the patient is, of, is having the characteristics of paranoid, hyperphrenic or catatonic, but does not obviously fit in any one alone. So it is undifferentiated type. Then comes catatonic, which is the rarer than the, than the other, is at risk of malnourishment and self-injury. In this type of schizophrenia, the patient will not eat and will be intended to injure himself or herself. It has unusual movements, often switching between extremes of overactivity and stillness. It can be indicated by this symptom, having two different extremes, extreme lazy, extreme overactive. Then comes residual schizophrenia. It is a type of schizophrenia who has past history of psychosis but only with negative symptoms and then comes with in the category of schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is not only complicated for one symptom but for the set of symptoms present in a patient. So this should be a worry or concern for the patients who have schizophrenia and are living in home. They can be violent anytime and that's why they need proper psychiatric and medical observation and treatment. Schizophrenia can be diagnosed with three different approach. One is the psychiatric evaluation and psychiatric history taking. Another is medical evaluation and physical examination. The third one is the laboratory testis, in which CT scan and MRI of brain is the important part. By all the three approaches, the proper diagnosis of schizophrenia can be done along with the symptoms that are already discussed. If we talk about the management of psychiatric problem schizophrenia, then there is pharmacological management, psychiatric management, and family work management. In pharmacological management, the psychiatric doctor will consult the patient to take antipsychotic medications. And in another form of management, there are self-help groups, there are problem-solving groups, there is rehabilitative groups, and for family, there is proper education for the management of these kinds of patients. But the early hospitalization of paranoid schizophrenic patient is one of the major things that should be done on time. All these managements of schizophrenia work together to develop a good sense of self-image in a person who has schizophrenia and try to reduce the symptoms which will help him or her to live the life like a normal human being. For nursing videos and better understanding, follow me on The Nursing World 21 on Instagram.